The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report that approximately 2,000 people under age 25 die annually, annually of sudden cardiac arrest. The September is the first ever Children's Cardiomyopathy Awareness Month, which calls attention to the symptoms and preventative measures of this underdiagnosed chronic heart disease. Dr. Daphne Shu is the division chief and co-director of the Pediatric Heart Center of Children's Hospital at Montefiore here in New York. And Lisa Yu is the the founding executive director of the Children's Cardiomyopathy Foundation, and they're here in our New York studios. Welcome both of you to Arise you. America. I appreciate it. Let's start with the nuts and bolts, Dr. Shu. What is cardiomyopathy? Cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle that leads to heart failure. Heart failure in a child means that they can have a risk of dying suddenly because the heart stops, or the heart doesn't work well on those children. They're very fatigued and tired. And are there uh, typical causative agents? What causes this? It's actually a genetic disease. It's a congenital disease that leads to bad things happening in the heart, and it can be passed down through family members. And that's one of the reasons we're here, is to talk about awareness of what cardiomyopathy is and how families should screen for it. And I want to talk about your experience, Lisa, in just, sec in just one second. But Dr. Shu, let me ask you one more question. It seems to me that, tragically, very often cardiomyopathy is diagnosed after the death, particularly of a young person. How frequently does that happen? It's not a frequent occurrence, but it is the leading cause of death in children who die suddenly or young adults who die suddenly. And that is a devastating event in a family. So one of the things we'd like to do is to make sure people are aware this disease exists and there's ways to screen for it. And although we can't treat it by making it go away, we can really do a lot to prevent the bad things from happening. So tell us, Lisa, why you uh, wanted to start this foundation, your connection to this. Right. So <clears throat> this, is, this cause is very personal to me. Um, my husband and I, we started the Children's Cardiomyopathy Foundation in 2002 after we lost two children to cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. and. Our first son um, uh, died of sudden cardiac arrest, um, and we only learned of his diagnosis after uh, the autopsy. So again, he was a victim of sudden cardiac arrest, and he was not diagnosed in time. So with our second son, he was diagnosed at birth, but he died waiting for a heart transplant. And um, cardiomyopathy is the leading cause for heart transplants in children under 18. So um, it's because of our own personal experience, we realized that there really was a need to start this foundation. Um, there was a lack of public awareness. Um, it was a poorly understood disease. And uh, we wanted to call attention to the need for research, the need for family support, and also awareness and advocacy for families that have this disease. Yeah, we are so sorry for your loss. It's a, it's a horrible way to come to become an advocate for an important issue. Mm -hmm. But what do parents need to do? Is there something they need to look out for, questions they need to ask their doctors? Right, um, and I think that is the reason that we are launching this uh, Children's Cardiomyopathy Awareness Month. Um, I think the most important thing that families can do is to first learn about their family's cardiac history, health history. Um, as Dr. Shu mentioned, cardiomyopathy can be a, an inherited disease. So it's asking those questions of, um, is there a family relation that uh, died suddenly uh, under the age of 50, or perhaps, um, there is a family member that has a heart condition, and what is that heart condition? So, um, you know, these are some of the questions you might want to ask, and then also just being aware of the signs and symptoms of cardiomyopathy. And that leads me perfectly to my, my next question, and that is what are the signs? What's, what symptoms, clinical signs, should people watch out for? Well, we always ask our children who come to be screened whether or not they have any symptoms with exercise. That's the main problem these children have. They have chest pain, they have dizziness, they're unable to keep up. And then we also ask them if they have problems with hearts beating fast or skipping beats because rhythm problems are very common in cardiomyopathies. Beyond raising awareness, Lisa, what, does your, what else does the foundation do? What do you want to accomplish? Um, well, the foundation, we're active in all areas related to the disease, so uh, we support research. We have a research grant program, um, and because of the research that we funded, um, more than 160 publications have been published on the disease. So these are guidelines that help physicians better manage and care for uh, 
children with cardiomyopathy. So, you know, there's the research, education, we provide family support. Um, and of course, you know, we, there are uh, advocacy initiatives that we've been working on. People that want to get more information, where should they go? Um, yes, yeah, so they can visit our website at uh, childrenscardiomyopathy.org. Uh, they can also visit our Facebook page, Children's Cardiomyopathy, or Twitter at CCF uh, Hearts Kids. We really are all out of time, but Dr. Shu, it occurs to me to ask you this. Are, are schools doing an adequate enough job of screening the athletes before they go out on the field to play to try to identify these students that are at risk? There are a lot of recommendations to screen kids, but unfortunately not all schools and all doctors follow those recommendations. And they should look them up on the AAP website and follow them, and we would have a lot more diagnoses before the bad things happen. Something that needs to be talked about more. Dr. Daphne, yeah. Daphne Shu, Lisa Wu, thank you so thank much you. for both of you coming in. Thank you for sharing your story.